Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to analyze the 2023 UPSC Civil Service Prelims Question Paper. In this particular video, we will be discussing the first 10 questions. So let's have a look into it. Let's read the first question. Consider the following statements. Jhelum River passes through Vular Lake. Krishna River directly feeds Koleru Lake. Meandering of Gandak River formed Kanwar Lake. So if, if you see this question, what we can understand is they have focused on the lakes Vular, Koleru and Kanwar Lake. Okay. So why was this question asked? This question was asked with respect to the Ramsar sites of India. Okay. Ramsar sites, you know, there are multiple uh, sites, wetlands in India, which are recognized as the Ramsar wetlands, right? So these three belong to the Ramsar list. Okay. That's the reason why this question was asked. Okay. Now you can also see there is pre previous year question asked from the same topic. You know, in the past time also, there was same similar questions asked about the similar rivers like the Jhelum River, you know, Krishna River, Koleru Lake and the Vular Lake. So we will see that question. Okay. Let us see this question which was asked in 2010, which was a PYQ. Here you can see the question was, which of the following pair is not correctly matched? Okay. Govind Sagar, Sutlaj. This is correct. Koleru Lake, Krishna. So this is a wrong. Okay. Ukai. Tapi, Vular Lake is Jhelum. So, from here you are getting two information. That is, the Vular Lake, the Jhelum River passes through the Vular Lake and Krishna doesn't go to the Koleru Lake. So, with this knowledge, you can attempt 2023's first question. So, here you will get that first statement, it is correct. Second is wrong. And third will be a new fact for you. You would know it if you have studied the current affairs. Okay. So, you know, Kanvartal. Okay. Kanvartal is a lake, Ramsar Lake in the state of Bihar. Okay. So, see this question is disputed. Okay. This question is disputed because there are many keys which say Gandak River makes the Oxbow Lake of Kanwar. But there are other, you know, other keys saying there is another river, Burhi Gandak. Okay. Burhi Gandak, which makes this particular Oxbow Lake. So, the key is still disputed. We will have to wait for the official UPSC key to understand what ex which river exactly, you know, forms the Kanwar Lake. Okay. So, but you can see the relation of the previous year questions to, you know, the current questions. Always you can find these traces. Okay. So, that's why it said you always do multiple pre previous year questions at least a set of 10 years, you know, to have a better understanding and you can also predict what kind of questions is going to come. Okay. Let's move on to the second question. The second question is about the ports of India. Okay. This is like a new type of question. Uh, we have not seen these pattern questions in previous times. So here you can see Kamaraja port. Okay. They have said first major port in India registered as a company. Okay. So this is factually correct. Okay. Kamaraja port is, was also known as Ennor port. It was initially known as Ennor port. Okay. This is a major port. You know, there are 12 major ports and this Kamaraja port is a major port and also it is the only one public corporate entity, corporate port of India. Okay. So, this is a corporate port. That means it is registered under Companies Act. Okay. Companies Act. Now, the second port they have mentioned is the Mundra port. Okay. You know, this is in Gujarat and this is correct. Largely, it is the largest privately owned port in India. Okay. Now, the third statement, Vishagapatnam port, they, they have given it is the largest container port. See, logically, you can understand if one port is a, la, you know, largest privately owned, right? It, the Mostly, the same port should be the largest container port also. So, logically, this is wrong. And that's why the answer is only two pairs. This is the correct answer. So, this is wrong. The largest privately owned and the largest container port is Mundra port. Okay. That's the second question. Now, let's move on to the third question. In the third question, they have asked about trees and how many of these are deciduous trees. Okay. So, the trees they have asked is jackfruit, which is mostly found in the Kerala, right? Kerala, state of Kerala, you can find it. Then, mahua and teak. 
See, if you have studied your basic geography, you know, class notes, you will understand these are deciduous, correct? And there is another one logic you can use. K jackfruit is found in very rain, you know, regions in Kerala which gets good rain, which would be tropical, evergreen in nature. And jackfruit cannot be a deciduous plant. So you can eliminate and these two are correct. So only two is correct. Okay, so those who have read Amrita IAS class notes, that is a basic geography class notes, I can straight get this question. I will show you the proof of it. So you can see the class notes which are given for the students. Here you can see deciduous and they have we have given Mahua, right? And take it is given under moist deciduous. So those who have studied the class notes properly, the geography class notes of Amrita IAS Academy, you will get the straight questions. In fact, almost 13 questions, out of the 13 geography question, 11 questions could be straight attended from the class notes of Amrita IAS, geography class notes of Amrita IAS, okay. So anyway, that was the third question. Let's move on to the fourth question. In this question, this question is regarding the geography and agriculture. It, it has mixed up the concept. So first statement is India has more arable area than China, okay. Second statement, the proportion of irrigated area is more in India as compared to China. Third is the average productivity per hectare in Indian agriculture is higher than China. See, if you know the basics of Indian agriculture, you know Indian agriculture faces many issues. The yield is not that high as you compare to these countries like America, China, etc. So productivity of India, Indian agriculture, that means the how much kilogram or how much tons you get per hectare okay is very less whether it be paddy whether it be you know uh, wheat etc so this is very less compared to china so you can eliminate this statement and these two statements are correct okay this is like a factually non statement which is india has you know largest area so again this question could be approached if you have read the class notes of uh, amrita yes i will show you the uh, class note proof of it this is the slide which we have given the students, okay. So here you can see India has the largest irrigated area in the world, which will give you that, that first statement is correct, okay. And here you can see the statement, the country uses two to three times more water than major countries. That means what? You have to spend more water means your productivity is less. So that question is a, that question was an easy question if you have read the static geography class notes, okay. Now let's move on to the next question. The fifth question is, which one of the following is the best example of repeated falls in sea level giving rise to present day extensive marshland? The options are Bitterganiga, Marakanam, Naupada, Run of Kutch. Okay, now all these seems to be marshland, <clears throat> right? This is a confusing question. But again, if you have read the basic class notes, okay, of geography, we have discussed in multiple areas. Right? For example, when we have discussed Indian geography, when we discussed Indian geography, we have discussed the major landforms, major deserts, right? We have discussed about the Thar Desert, the Cholistan Desert of Pakistan, the run of Kutch. Now, when we discuss the run of Kutch, we discussed, you know, this run of Kutch region is a salt marsh because of the repeated coming, incoming of the seawater from the Kutch side, okay? From the Kutch side, the water, seawater comes during the high tide, Okay, now when low tide happens, what happens? The water is left behind there, evaporates and the salt is left over there, right? So if you know this logic, you could have got the answer, okay? So in the class notes, we have discussed that the high tides bring in salt water to run. So with this logic, you could have approached. Or there is a second logic to approach this question. That is, when we have discussed the types of soils, the age of soils we have discussed, there is uh, Gondwana type, Vindhyan type, Kudapa type, right? Jurassic type, tertiary type. So we have discussed multiple age of rocks in India. And when we discuss the Jurassic system, we discussed, this is the particular period where there was rise of sea level and then there was shallow, you know, sea level was declining. So here you can see the marine transgression in the later part of the Jurassic period gave rise to the shallow water deposit in Rajasthan region and in Kutch region. By this logic also, you could have got that answer. That is the marshland which, which was formed due to repeated fall in sea level is run of Kutch. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. The sixth question is regarding minerals. 
uh, and we have already we had predicted there is going to be a question which is going to be about the minerals it's or anything something related to the minerals okay i will tell you what was the reason for it okay anyway let's see the question first ilmenite and rutile okay ilmenite and rutile are abundantly available in certain coastal tracts okay of india or which of the following okay so now the options they have given is aluminium copper iron and titanium so if you know basics you know some basics that you know these aluminium iron copper these majorly they are not mined within the coastal region because you know aluminium hindalco right jharkhand region iron tisco all these are in the odisha jharkhand west bengal belt okay that is the eastern mineral belt of india okay then the left behind is titanium so this could have been the this is the answer so this could have been one approach where you could have got the answer now i will tell you why this question was asked and why this question was predicted you know so i will tell you what uh, there was one question asked earlier regarding sand is a minor metal this was a question so just have a read about it you can take a moment pause it and you can read the question here you can see sand is a minor mineral according to the prevailing law in the country okay prevailing law what is that law which talks about minor minerals major minerals notified minerals so we have a law that is mmdr act mines and minerals development and regulation act okay so see this was a pyq okay so once you have seen this pyq a serious student would have done a reading about mmdr act and now if you have read the mmdr act within the act they talks about the titanium minerals which is ilmenite and rutile these are the mineral ores which are found in the uh, coastal tracts of kerala you know total, total coastal tracts of india okay so those who had the class notes of amrita is would have also got this answer how because when we discuss thorium okay which is a nuclear atomic mineral we have discussed thorium is mainly obtained from monazite and ilmenite in the beach sands of kerala see you know thorium it's a rare mineral right it's not commonly seen as iron ore or you know copper or aluminium so you know thorium is rare and you know this titanium everything could be clubbed together right they are kind of a rare and they will be found in a similar region so if you have read this logic you will know that ilmenite contains something very rare right with that logic also you could have got the answer for this question which is titanium okay now let's move on to the next question seventh question the question is about three fourth of world's cobalt a metal required for the manufacture of batteries for electric motor vehicles is produced by okay argentina botswana republic of congo and kazakhstan so if you have some basic idea of geography you will get it you know argentina Argentina is a South American country. You know, Chile, Bolivia, Argentina. These countries are known as the lithium triangle. Okay, these countries make the world's largest lithium deposits. Okay, lithium, which is used in our mobile phones, uh, digital cameras, etc. Like the uh, rechargeable lithium batteries. Now, Botswana is the world's largest producer of diamond. One of the largest producer of diamond. Kazakhstan, everyone knows it is. famous for uranium okay so you are left with c and this is the answer this is the region which produces world's largest cobalt okay so this was a logical very easy question let's move on to the next question next question they have asked about which of the countries are part of the congo basin okay congo is a river in africa in the west africa which is part of it so if you have an idea about the map map of africa you know congo is in the, is in the west africa and you will find cameroon is part of the congo basin and countries like nigeria uganda okay they are in the east part okay nigeria uh, uganda is in the east nigeria is much norther to the congo basin so nigeria uganda and all cannot be the answer cameroon is the answer so answer is option a which one of the following is part of congo basin basin the answer is a cameroon okay so let's move on to the next question consider the following statements amarkandak hills are at the confluence of vindhya and sahyadri ranges you know vindhya ranges are in the central india vindhyas and satpura and sahyadri is the western ghats starting from the you know gujarat southern gujarat maharashtra goa towards the, through the coast and western coast of india 
So you know Amarkandak, Achanakumar Amarkandak, it is also UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, it is bordering Madhya Pradesh and uh, Chhattisgarh. So logically it cannot be Sahyadri Ranges, they have mixed up Vindhyas, it's actually Vindhyas and Satpuras, okay. It is in the eastern, southeastern Madhya Pradesh region, this Amarkandak Hills. So first statement is wrong. Bilirigiri Rangan Hills constitute the easternmost part of Satpura range. Again, this is wrong because Bilirigiri Rangan Hills are, is in Karnataka. Okay, and Satpura doesn't come in Karnataka. This is also wrong. Seshachalam Hills constitute the southernmost part of the Western Ghats. This is absolute wrong because it is part of the Eastern Ghats. It is past part of the Eastern Ghats. So, this is also wrong. So, answer is none of it. Okay, and again here also, if you have read the class notes of Amrita Yes, we have everything mentioned here. So, you can see the Amarkandak. It talks about that. It is in the West, uh, you know, Amarkandak is on Maikla range. Meeting point of Vindhyas and Satpuras. You can, in fact, find the same sentence used by the UPSC questions in our class notes. Okay. So, a student who has studied the class notes would have got the answer here. And also, with respect to the uh, second part, you can see we have the Sesha Chalam Hills given under the Eastern Ghats. So, those who have studied this also could have got the answer for the same question. So, that was the ninth question. Now, let us move on to the tenth question. With reference to India's projects on connectivity, consider the following statements. East-West Corridor under Golden Coordinator Project connects Dibrugar and Surat. Okay. Now, if you see the East-West Corridor under Golden Coordinator, you can see it is connecting Silchar to Porbandar. Okay, so first statement is wrong. It is not connecting the Brugger to Surat. It is connecting Silchar to Porbandar. Second, trilateral highway connects Moray in Manipur and Chiang Mai in Thailand via Myanmar. Okay, almost correct, but it's not Chiang Mai. You will find that the trilateral corridor connects Moray in Manipur to Masoth, Masoth of Thailand through Myanmar. Okay, so again, second statement is also wrong here. This is also wrong here. Third statement, Bangladesh, China, India, Myanmar economic corridor connects Varanasi in UP with Kunming in China. This is wrong because it connects West Bengal's Kolkata. Kolkata to Kunming. Okay. So, all are wrong here. So, you can see that it is connecting Kolkata to Kunming of China. Okay. So, this is the end of the first part of the PYQ analysis of 2023. We have kept it short. Uh, what we recommend for the students is to read the, uh, you know, read all the four options which have also been asked in the PYQs, okay. So, because PYQs act as a source for the next year's question. So, we recommend you students to refer to at least 10 years of previous year questions, study it properly and approach the upcoming civil service exam. Thank you. Amrita, IAS Academy.